Hi, this is Dr. A, and we're going to do a quick review of the lipids. So um, let's talk about fatty acids and triglycerides. So first of all, fatty acids are carboxylic acids that have long hydrocarbon chains. So what does that mean? That means that uh, they there are chains here. It's usually an even number of carbon molecules, and they are uh, they have hydrogen attached to the carbon. So it's a hydrocarbon. And um, they are found in triglycerides or phospholipids, and they can be saturated or unsaturated. So a saturated fatty acid would be like this top one here. We'll have carbons that have single bonds between each of the carbon, and then every other bond is saturated with hydrogen. So there's Every other bond is taken up with hydrogen except here where it's bound to oxygen. So every carbon is saturated with hydrogen. That is why it is a saturated fatty acid. Then the unsaturated, there will be one or more double bonds. And so if there's a double bond between two of the carbons, then that causes a kink to be formed in the chain. And the more double bonds, the more kinks there are in the chain. And because there's a double bond, there are basically two hydrogen uh, atoms that are missing, and the other two that are bound, are bound to it are usually bound on the same side of the double bond, and that's what um, creates this kink. So this is a healthy, uh, normal, unsaturated fatty acid, and uh, it's what you would find in nature. So these saturated fatty acids here, they are straight and so they can stack really uh, close together and compact and so they'll make that uh, these guys the uh, saturated ones will then be uh, solid at room temperature so you can think of butter and most animal fats these unsaturated because they have that kink they cannot pack tightly and so there will be liquid at room temperature and so something like uh, olive oil would be a good example and then this right here is a trans fat. So trans fat are man-made, they're not found in nature. And then there is a double bond here, so it's technically an unsaturated fatty acid. But the, the way the double bond is, it, it doesn't give a really a big kink in the chain at all. That makes it almost flat, and it's because there's a hydrogen on each side of that double bond. And so it's in the trans formation versus this one is in the cis formation. That actually makes that uh, carbon chain almost straight and uh, allows it to be more solid at room temperature kind of like the saturated fats are. These are not good for your health at all and uh, should be avoided and they're found in stuff like Crisco. Anything that has hydrogenated oils will have trans fats in it. So fatty acids are used for fuel uh, but they're also used in membrane structure as part of phospholipids and they're also bioactive lipids. Uh, a triglyceride is a glycerol molecule, shown here, with three fatty acids attached to it, with three fatty acid tails. If these fatty acid tails are unsaturated, they'll have kinks in them and they'll be more fluid, and those are actually better for you too. The point of triglyceride is energy storage and insulation. So any excess uh, glucose or excess fat, whatever it is you take in, that's not burned for energy can then be stored uh, into adipose tissue as triglycerides. Increased triglycerides are usually seen in diabetes mellitus and pancreatitis and alcoholism and in glycogen storage diseases. Next we have our phospholipids, our sterols and our sphingolipids. So our phospholipids are two fatty acids with a phosphate group. So you can see here your two fatty acid tails. Same thing with uh, saturated and unsaturated. If you have more unsaturated, the, the tails will be a little bit more fluid. The membrane will be more fluid and it'll be healthier. Um, the uh, phosphate head is at the top here uh, of this diagram. And the phosphate head is water soluble, whereas the uh, fatty acid uh, tails are water insoluble or uh, hydrophobic, so hydrophilic, hydrophobic. And so in your cell membrane, because that's a, the function of phospholipids to make up cell membranes, um, they, the tails will be facing each other 
and the phosphate heads will be facing the inside and the outside of the cell, which is where water is present. These, the structure allows for the semipermeability of cell membranes. And then you have your sterols. Sterols are a ring structure. An example would be cholesterol. So here is cholesterol, and this is the sterol ring right here. So uh, cholesterol, most specifically, is an unsaturated steroid alcohol that contains four rings and a single side chain. So here's your single side chain. Here are your four rings. These are the sterol. This is the sterol ring right here. Sterol rings. And uh, uh, cholesterol is uh, synthesized almost exclusively by animals. Uh, it is not readily catabolized or broken down by most cells, so they can use it, but then they have to get rid of it. It is not a source of fuel. You cannot burn cholesterol as fuel, uh, but it is a hormone precursor, and it is also embedded in the cell membranes to increase the stability of the cell membranes. The hormones uh, that can be built from sterols, especially cholesterol, for example, are is the precursor to pregnenolone, which then can become progesterone or testosterone or estrogen or uh, cortisol. Anyway, there's quite a few of them. And then it's also uh, what your body uses to make vitamin D, which is another hormone. And then lastly, your sphingolipids. They are found in the red cells in brain and nerve cell membranes, and they are very similar in structure to phospholipids. And that is your lesson on lipids. Thank you.